Welcome to the video, my name is Gabba and today we're going to be walking through five mistakes you are likely to be making in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This game is of course quite new and a lot of players are going into it headfirst, assuming a lot of things, but there's a lot of small tweaks they've made behind the scenes making the gameplay rather different. So, first of all, the first mistake, many people are playing this game misunderstanding how the score streak system works. The score streaks are one of the things you can't change mid-game. You need to go into the matches understanding what's possible based on the map, how confident you are against the opposition, and what gun you're using. Grab a quick screenshot of what's on screen now for later. I'm not going to go through all of them. I don't want to bore you with the numbers, but I will focus on one specific thing. Earning score streaks in Black Ops Cold War is one of the most important elements of the game and somebody earning something top tier can certainly change the outcome of the entire match. To give you some context, here we have Team Deathmatch and on the side here we have objective game modes like Dom and Hardpoint. Here we have the kill streak and for example the 6th kill, you have got 400 score for your 6th kill in TDM. But this is to decide what you would have earned in that streak so far. So on the 6th kill, for example, you would have earned 1,550 points in total. Meaning, you would have earned yourself a counter spy plane. If you die, you do keep that score, but you'll be returning back down to 100 or just 50 points per kill. I have a video in the works which details all of the streaks and how to counter them, but Treyarch keep changing the values the damage output and things like that and I don't want to upload the video too soon so please subscribe to the channel if you need something like that uh, but for now of course you can only equip three different streaks before going into a game and choosing something quite high like the attack chopper is a risky choice and would require you to actively streak up to even earn it. My suggestion to earn a VTOL or chopper gunner is to also equip the war machine Unlocking the War Machine streak in the same life will very likely lead you to earn higher streaks, as kills with this weapon actually count towards future score streaks. Bear in mind, assists will only ever grant you a maximum of 50 score. This means that it will take you 193 assists to earn yourself a chopper gunner, so it's well worth getting those kill streaks. Notice the score awarded for a 10 kill streak. In both TDM and DOM, you earn the score needed for a cruise missile, a war machine, or a chopper gunner. A 10 kill streak per game is what you need to be striving for. If you notice you're on a 7 or 8, do not take risks. Do not cap flags or re-challenge any player that's already looking at you. Stay alive no matter what. Post up, cover a lane, and get you past the 10 kill mark. If you're not on a streak, play objectives shoot things down out of the sky, and take risks for your team to get the win. If you're on a streak, you have to stay on it. Do not die, as you'll be set back a lot of score. If you're going for the nuclear medal, that's 30 kill streak. The streak setup I would suggest you use is the UAV, the armor, and the war machine. You need to loop them twice in order to get yourself a nuclear. More on that in a future video. Be sure to subscribe via the red button down below for that video coming soon. The second thing most people are doing wrong is picking the wrong class for the game mode and the opposition. We know we are mostly grinding for the gold camos, we're using weapons that are not really suitable for the occasion, but these guns are not going anywhere. Change them up and work towards a few at once and make sure you're picking the correct gun for the map you are playing. There is very little time between games now, so you have the option to edit these classes in game. Your opponents are likely doing the same, so be sure you're doing whatever you can to gain the advantage and use the right class for the map and the game mode. I'd even go as far as changing your class, whether you have the B flag or not, or in the lead. Depending on the sight line you're going for, if you're covering the left or the right, it does depend. So change your class accordingly. This also extends to changing your perks based on what the opposition are using. If no one's using Ninja, why not use the field mic? The only thing you cannot change mid-game is the score streaks, your weapon camo, the accessories, or the reticle. Before a game starts though, there are stats on each weapon in the creator class. Your best weapon will be shown here. It's quite easy to discover what weapon is the best one for you, so why not extend that and use that at the moment while the game is still new, while you're still learning the game, have your best chance to stay alive the longest by using your best gun. 
Take advantage of double XP weekends when they're available and of course double XP tokens coming later this year. Level up weapons to above level 20. At level 20, you will unlock a suppressor, allowing you to move around the map a little bit more easily and discover the good and the bad of the weapon you're currently using. My suggestion if you don't like a weapon, put it to one side and work on it later. These guns get buffed and nerfed all the time. Talking of suppressors takes me on to my third mistake people are making. Staying off the minimap is an amazing way to stay alive a long time, and hanging around your own red dot is a huge mistake. There are three suppressors in this game, each with different characteristics. I have a full breakdown video in the description down below, but to cut to the chase, to stay off the radar completely, you need to use the attachment that gives you 100% suppression. Unlike Modern Warfare, you will appear on the opposition's minimap a lot for a lot of reasons, and misunderstanding when enemies can see you and why they're looking at you needs to be managed. Every bullet, every rocket you shoot will reveal your location to the enemy, every enemy on the opposite team. This shows you on the minimap for a full one second. Prior to unlocking the suppressors, your best practice is to shoot and move. Expect more enemies to back up their fallen teammates, so it's best to move somewhere unexpected to catch them off guard. After every gunfight, avoid pushing alone, as even more enemies will be looking towards you, knowing your location and having their weapons pre-aimed, posted up, ready for you to go around the corner. My tip is to shoot and move, maybe retreat back again and get some teammates. Use nades to slow down enemy progression and as a bonus they create a really small smoke shield for you to get away. The fourth mistake people make in Black Ops Cold War is to chase those red dots I was just talking about. We all want the glory and a spicy kill cam, but mid-streak it is highly discouraged. In softcore, enemies have 150 health, with the option to use the stem shot to re-heal fully mid-gunfight, or even have the armor killstreak on, which gives them another 50 health. With all of this health, taking on multiple enemies at once is very difficult without the use, of course, of the war machine, or some backups from teammates. These red dots are usually moving towards you and your best option is to use this information of their locations to move somewhere good for cover, therefore leading to a much more balanced gunfight. In this game there's something known as spawn protection. That protects people spawning in from explosives, that's from artillery, grenades, the war machine, the napalm and of course other big killstreaks like the gunship. Don't bother attacking those with grenades in the spawn. They literally have about five seconds worth of spawn protection. So don't even throw your grenades there. But of course, they're not immune to bullets themselves. In this game, there is, of course, safety in numbers. So buddy up at all costs. Sharing kills is not like in Black Ops 4, though. You only get the large streak bonuses for dealing the last bit of damage. So make sure you're finishing guys off if you're into that. Only when you're with teammates are you to sprint around corners. You do not have the map knowledge you need just yet. Expect there to be a play around any corner, as Ghost and Ninja are possible combo in this game using the perk Greed Wildcard. If you can't beat them, join them and use Ghost and Ninja at the same time as well. It takes a minute or two for the first spy plane to come in, so experiment with other classes in the first two minutes or so until Ghost is actually needed. For example, Using the Danger Close Wild card instead would be a good shout, meaning you spawn with two lethal grenades and this helps you cap the first flag in domination. Not addressing poor visibility in this game is also on my list of mistakes people make in Black Ops Cold War. Use the flashlight. As soon as you unlock this attachment, it's in the body category. This shows a red dot above the enemy within a 60 meter radius. It also shows their full name in big letters to aid this visibility. Check out this footage on the cartel map. They're very clear through the bushes, through the trees. It works a treat. These red dots are even visible through walls, allowing you to wall bang and pre-aim people around the corner and get yourself reported. If you want to help seeing enemies, take a look at the colorblind assist settings. In here, you can adjust some colors that suit your eyes. Of course, what you can do in the visual settings is set here to remove something known as motion blur. Also consider lowering your field of view. This enlarges the central part of your screen, making targets even bigger. For reference, I'll be running 105. I'll be experimenting with a 60 field of view to compare the number of gunfights I win. So expect that in a future video, maybe next week. 
So make sure you comment down below anything you want me to cover and test in a future video. My name is Gaber. I do want to hear from you down in the comments. So maybe drop a like if you've enjoyed it and maybe consider subscribing for more. While you're here, maybe check out another video or two. Take it easy. Peace.